Well, good evening, everybody. This is uh, District Governor John coming to you live from the District 5110 studios in beautiful Sisters, Oregon. Uh, I've been traveling around our, our very large uh, district. I think I've, I've visited about 49 clubs so far, and I've been giving this talk over and over again uh, to uh, live people in a room, and I'm finding this really interesting to be giving it now uh, to all of you uh, so uh, appropriately over the internet since you are an e-club. Um, I just, you probably know all this because being an e-club, you probably use this technology quite a bit. But if you look at your uh, little dashboard over on the right-hand side, you'll see that there's a place where you can type in questions. So if you have a thought over the course of my talk, my talk will last about, oh, probably about 25 minutes. And if you have a question, go ahead and type it in. And when I'm done, I'll go through those and, uh, and we'll answer questions and maybe even have a little discussion. Uh, so with no further ado, I'm ready to get started. Um, you know, I've been traveling around to all the clubs and, and I, I, I couldn't do that if I didn't love Rotary, if I didn't really have an abiding love for Rotary. Uh, and I think that, 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 the world needs Rotary. I think communities need Rotary, and I think that the world needs Rotary. Uh, I have a special connection, actually a couple special connections to your club in that my wife, Lee, is a, a member of your club, uh, as is, oh, now I'm not getting a, there's my wife, Lee, uh, as is my sister-in-law, Jackie Oakley. And I think they're really both great examples of what an e-club can be. Uh, first, in the case of my sister-in-law, Jackie, who's your treasurer, uh, she lives in a community of about 110 people out in eastern Oregon, and she really doesn't have the opportunity. Uh, her community couldn't sustain a Rotary Club, so it's great that she has the opportunity to be a part of Rotary because she's always been a Rotarian at heart. And my wife, who this year is traveling with me most of the time, can't attend her meetings. So uh, it's great that through the E-Club, she can maintain her association with Rotary. Um, you know, as I as I travel around, I've, I've met an awful lot of people in the district as I've been traveling uh, these last actually three or four years that I've been really active. And people always ask me, well, you know, John, how's it going uh, being district governor? What's it like? And I, I always give them the same answer that the fellow that fell off the, the 80 story building gave. Uh, he, he fell out the window and as he was going down, there was a, a window washer taking a break, eating a sandwich on his scaffolding on, on about the 40th floor. And as the guy fell by, the, the window washer looked at him and said, hey, how's it going? And as the guy fell by, he said, so far, so good. And a lot of th this year, I kind of feel that way. And, and really, it's not so much so far, so good. I, I would say so far, so great. Um, getting to know uh, how 70 different Rotary Clubs operate and what they do and what's important to them and who their members are is just such a great opportunity. I'm really enjoying it uh, as I go. Well, as I said, you know, I, I really do love Rotary, as I'm sure a lot of you do. But, you know, Rotary has been uh, in a little bit of a crisis. Over one 10-year period, we lost 63,000 members in North America, 63,000 fewer Rotarians. And just in our own district, we lost 700 members. Now there's 70 clubs in the district, 700 members, even I can do that math. So that means there's 10 fewer Rotarians in each club on average. That's 10 fewer hands to help with fundraising, to help with projects. And that's a problem. You know, I've been uh, training uh, either as district trainer or as a pets instructor I've been training president-elects for the last six years, and I've had scores of presidents come to me and say, you know, our, our, we're losing members, our club's in trouble, we got to turn it around, and we, and we don't know how. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's just a numbers crisis that we're having. Uh, there are issues that Rotary Clubs are facing, and, and I actually uh, would propose that it's not a membership crisis at all, that it's more of an identity crisis that Rotary's having, and that that's, that's what we're experiencing rather than just a membership crisis. Uh, now, Rotary International, uh, I like to call it the mothership in Evanston, well, they had a great idea. They said, what, what, you know, what we can do to solve this problem, we need a new look. We need a shiny new brand. 
and they hired Siegel and Gale, which is an international uh, marketing company. They've marketed uh, and they've rebranded such companies as Pepsi, Burger King, the Holiday Inn, uh, the YMCA. And I could mention or show you the logos of 20 other companies that you'd instantly recognize. So this is a very high-powered company that is is uh, rebranding major corporations in America and around the world. And so they said, we need this shiny new image. And, you know, I, I really wasn't a big supporter of that in the beginning because to me it was like having an old uh, a rusty pickup truck that doesn't run very well and slapping a new coat of paint on it and thinking it's going to, it's going to make the, the truck okay. Uh, rotary clubs were were experiencing issues that needed to be dealt with. And I didn't really think a, the shiny new brand would, would be the thing that would solve that problem. So we spent about $3.2 million on this shiny new brand with Siegel and Gale. And, you know, we thought we were buying the brand but we really got a lot, lot more. So this is the rotary wheel that we all know and love. I mean, this is the rotary wheel that I've, I've been in rotary since 1987. This is the iconic institutional wheel that's represented and been the logo of our organization. And I was like, when, this, when we got this from Siegel and Gale, I was like, you can't change the rotary wheel. And I heard that all over the place. You can't change the rotary wheel. I mean, it's an institution. And even the, the RI board of directors voted three separate times to bring back the old wheel. Now, it got shot down, but three times they brought it up to bring back the old wheel. So nobody was really comfortable with changing the rotary wheel. But I did a little research. You know what? That was the original rotary wheel. That was our that was our rotary wheel. And then it was this complete with the dust, I think, from the road. And then it was this. And you can start to see some of the modern elements of our of our wheel there. And then the Rotary International Association, similar to what our wheel is. So it has changed over the years, I realize that it has evolved as Rotary has evolved. So has our wheel. So we got this new logo and, you know, I've gotten used to it and I started to kind of like it. Uh, it works for Rotary International, just like that. It works for clubs. It works for the district. It works for the foundation and Rotaract and Interact. And what, what Siegel and Gale discovered was we were using 37 different logos, 37 different logos. And they said, you know, in this world where, where we, people are used to getting their information parsed out to them very clearly, very consistently, uh, that we were confusing the public. So, so this logo actually has kind of grown on me as I've gotten used to it. And I really, truly learned the power of it. Uh, my wife and I, Lee, who's a member of your club, were hauling her horses back from San Diego, and we were driving through uh, Redding, California, and I see next to the to I-5, to the freeway there, I see the In-N-Out Burger. Well, I, I cannot drive by an In-N-Out Burger without stopping in. So we pull off the off the freeway there, and we, we park the big 36-foot horse trailer, and we go in to In-N-Out Burger. Now, I told you that the, that the RI board kept voting to bring back the old wheel. So the companies that, that do the logo wear, you know, like the shirts and, and all that, the hats, they wouldn't print stuff with the new logo because they were afraid that if, if the old logo came back in the old wheel, they'd be stuck with all their merchandise. Well, finally, when it was finally put to rest and everyone agreed, yes, we are going to use the new logo, they started printing these. And I had been at, uh, at, at a Rotary, uh, some big event, and I had bought my first polo shirt with the new logo on it that said rotary on it with with the wheel and and i learned the power of that you know i've got the rotary wheel uh tattooed on my right calf which is i'm not kidding i actually do have that uh it was a bet and i've never been sure whether i won or i lost but I, but i do have the rotary wheel tattooed on my right calf i wear shorts a lot and i probably got 15 shirts with the with the rotary wheel on them and i don't think anybody's ever stopped me uh, to make a comment when I when they've seen my calf or seen my the 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 uh, logo on my shirt, but this day the first day I ever wore the new logo, two people came up to us in that in and out burger. It was very busy, but one one fellow came up uh, uh, who saw it and uh, actually came to our table and said that the evening before. Her, his daughter had been given a scholarship by the local club there in Reading. And I think he just assumed I was 
a member of that club. So he came over to our table to thank us. Uh, and so I, you know, I did what I think anyone would do. I just said, no problem, glad to do it anytime. Uh, and uh, and then the other gal was, she had been a youth exchange student that had gone to Spain many years before. So I really was able to see the power of that new logo. Um, and and I've, I've really become a big fan of it. So, you know, I said that we, we thought we were spending all that money buying a brand, but in order for Siegel and Gale to give us this new brand, to give us this new look, well, they had to understand Rotary. They had to understand a few things about Rotary. They needed to understand who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Very simple. You know, they said, if we're going to rebrand your organization, we need to know more. So they did some research. And the first thing they did was they asked 10,000 non-Rotarians in North America, 10,000 non-Rotarians, a very simple question. What is Rotary? And out of that 10,000 people, 40% had never heard of Rotary, never heard of it at all. Another 40% was, had heard the name but really didn't have any idea what it was. And only 20% had any familiarity with, with what Rotary is. And interestingly, when they interviewed them, they found out that most of those people actually had a lot of misconceptions about Rotary. They thought they knew what Rotary was. So Siegel and Gale said, you've got a problem. Here you've got this amazing organization that does so much in the world, and nobody knows who you are. So then they did a little more research. They asked 10,000, actually it was 10,634. Yes, I read all 187 pages of the Siegel and Gale report. It was 10,634 Rotarians in North America, that same question, what is Rotary? And they got about 1,000 different answers. They said, well, uh, we're an international organization that services youth. We're a leadership organization. We're the original uh, social network. Uh, we're a humanitarian organization. So, so all, these, all these answers, but, but not really explaining who we are, what we do, and why we do it. And I think we've all been, I know that I've been driving down the street and somebody says, gee, John, you spend so much time with this Rotary. You know, what is Rotary? And I kind of stumble around. Well, you know, it's a club and we get in, you know, and then we have the kids come across and, and you know, we owe oh, the local projects we do. And, oh, and international too. We do, you know, and you're kind of like searching around because we do a lot of different things. So we're not e easily described. So they said, you know, you've really got a problem because not only is there no clear, clear definition outside of Rotary about who you are, but there's no clear definition inside of Rotary. They said your organization has some issues with your with your image. So they decided to do some more research and they, they asked they, they asked 50,000 Rotarians all over the world a very, very simple question. Why did you join Rotary? And interestingly, the number one reason why people join Rotary is to positively impact their community. To, to, for that local service. But yet, yet if you think about it, the, the picture that we portray of ourselves to the public is that drop of polio vaccine going into the baby's mouth or the child standing by the new water well in an African village. Uh, so, you know, we're very proud of it. That has a lot of meaning to us as Rotarians. But that's not especially what's attracting people to our organization. Uh, and then the second reason, and this really surprised me about why people have joined Rotary, was friendship. Friendship. Um, you know, I've been in Rotary since 1987, and I always thought of us as a, as a service organization. So that surprised me a little bit. And then that, that dirty, nasty word in Rotary that we're not supposed to, oh, networking? We're not a networking organization. We've been saying that for years. Yet almost 20% of the people that are coming to our organization are coming looking for networking. And then not surprisingly, only about 8% of the people join for that international aspect. So I found that really interesting, and as did Siegel and Gale. And then they asked one more question of those same, those same 50,000 Rotarians. Slightly different, but I think even more revealing. They asked the question, why have you stayed in Rotary? Why have you stayed? Number one reason, friendship. The relationships we build in our clubs, uh, around the district, 
friendship is the number one reason why people stay in Rotary. And I, I for one, was very surprised by that. Not surprisingly, uh, to have a positive impact on the local community is the second reason. And then once people are in Rotary, they discover international service. And that almost doubles in terms of why people stay. And like I said, that's very valuable and very important to us as Rotarians. And then the networking opportunities, again, once people understand Rotary, uh, that's not quite as, as large of a, of a reason. But I really do think we are a networking organization, and I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So, and I know this is probably kind of a, a, a confusing slide, like what do all those things possibly have in common? But uh, I, I added the tomatoes just about three weeks ago. We, like I said, we have a huge uh, district, about 70,000 square miles, 70 clubs. So I do a lot of driving, and I like to listen to the podcasts as I'm, as I'm driving. And so I was listening to a podcast, and I heard something that really intrigued me. And it was that knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom, on the other hand, is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. So I heard that, and of course, I immediately thought of Siegel and Gale. Uh, and the reason I thought of Siegel and Gale was because through this study, you know, like I said, we thought we were getting this shiny new brand. But what we really got was we got the knowledge about what makes our organization go, what's attracting people to our organization what has value to the members of our organization. So I really think that with this knowledge, if we use it wisely, if we, if we use it with wisdom, that it can, it can be the roadmap to the future of our organization. So when you're preparing uh, to be district governor, it's about a three-year uh, preparation. And it's it's like getting a master's degree in Rotary. I, I was amazed. I was at a Rotary club this morning in Sun River giving my presentation, and they did a little Rotary quiz. And when it got to my table, they asked the question, what were the first five Rotary clubs? In what cities were the first five Rotary clubs? And I could answer the question. I, I, I didn't know that I knew that, but I did. Uh, so it's like getting a master's degree in Rotary. But the more I've learned about Rotary, and, and after reading the Siegel Gale report, to me, I think Rotary is really simple. And I think part of its beauty is its simplicity. And to me, Rotary is very simple. It's service, it's friendship, and we know that's been confirmed by the Siegel and Gale report. And then there's another word I like to use, and that is leverage. Service, friendship, and leverage. And what I mean by leverage is, you know, I'm, I'm one meek human being uh, the, on the face of the earth with 7 billion other people. And uh, our uh, international president, Ravi Ravindran, has asked us this year to be a gift to the world. That's our theme, be a gift to the world. Well, you know, I can be a gift maybe to my family, my friends, maybe a little bit in my own community. But how can I be a gift? I'm a shopkeeper in Bend. How can I be a gift to the world? Well, through my friendships and my associations in Rotary, I have this leverage with the other members of my club, with other clubs in my district, and actually through the Rotary Foundation with clubs around the world, that, I, that I'm just an ordinary person, but I can do extraordinary things. And so as Rotarians, being in Rotary and through the service and the friendships that we have, we have incredible leverage to do far more than we could ever do uh, just as our individual selves. So I, th I think service, friendship, and leverage really describe what Rotary is all about. Uh, when I was seven years old, I used to go down to the house on the corner uh, one day after school every week and play with Stanley. Stanley lived in the lower bunk of a room he shared with his older brother. They had they had cowboy and Indian wallpaper that I was very jealous. I can still see it today. I was very, I loved that cowboy and Indian wallpaper. But Stanley had brittle bone disease. And he spent most of his time confined to that lower bunk in the bedroom. And I'd go down one day, like I said, after school, and we'd play Chinese checkers or crazy eights or, you know, whatever games we played back then. And one day I came home from school and my mother said, okay, you know, it's time to go down and play with Stanley. And that day I said, oh, mom. I don't want to go down and play with Stanley. That's so boring when I go down there. 
And uh, my mother's been gone for 15 years, and th this is one of my most vivid memories. She bent over and she took me by the arm and she said, look, you're lucky. You get to go to school, play on the playground, come home, ride your bike, roam around through the hills. Stanley's not lucky like you are. He can't do those things. He's your neighbor, and it's your duty to go spend time with him. And then she said those words that, that every child dreads hearing. She said, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed. And that really resonated with me, that seven-year-old boy. Uh, it really resonated. I never missed another play date with Stanley. Uh, and the reason that I, I like to talk about that in usually a room full of Rotarians is because I think every, everybody listening right now probably has their own Stanley story. It may not be as clear to you as mine is, but somewhere along the line, a teacher or a scout leader or a priest or most likely your parents instilled that value in you, that, that when the world smiles on you, it's your duty to share that with others that maybe aren't quite as fortunate as you are. So I think that's why we're all Rotarians. I think that's what attracts us to Rotary. So if, if, if we jump forward 30 years, and I, I'm 37 years old, and I'm driving a fancy car, living in a big house, got a great job, growing family, somebody says to me, hey, how'd you like to join my Rotary Club? I say, well, what's Rotary? He says, well, you know, we get together, we have lunch every week, and then we do local projects. And he mentions a few th things, the Rotary. And I think, oh, great. You know, the world is, this is my chance to give back. So I joined that Rotary Club in the, the Rotary Club of San Luis Obispo de Tolosa in 1987 with that expectation that I was going to be able to give back to my community and to do that service. Well, you know, I mentioned earlier that on average, there's 10 fewer Rotarians in all our clubs. And a lot of the clubs are saying, well, we, we don't have enough. Our people are burnt. You know, we have fewer people in the club now. They're burned out. Uh, we don't do as much service anymore. We don't do the fundraising, so we can't do the service. You know, so my question is, what, what would have happened if I had joined that club in 1987 with that expectation of doing that service? And they just said, oh, we don't really do that anymore. You know, I probably would have just drifted away. And that's what's happening in Rotary now is that people are just, they're drifting away because they're not engaged. So you know, I mentioned all those club presidents that would come to me or presidents elect that would say, you know, our club's in trouble. You know, we don't know what to do. How do we save our club? To me, it's really simple. I always say the same thing to them. Do more service. That's what engages me. We were given this beautiful design. And I call it beautiful because with these five avenues of service, if a club is doing all these avenues of service, the club members are going to be able to, first off, discover what their rotary passion is and then engage in that passion. But of course, if, if a club isn't doing that much, they won't be able to first discover and then they can't engage. And again, they drift away. So I think it's really important. And I know you would probably, as, as an e-club, have a problem with, well, how do we do local service? But I know you have done local service in the community of Monument out in Eastern Oregon. I know that you provided books for a library. and I think that's local. So I think that's the really important thing is that is that we do a lot of service, that we engage our members in Rotary. And, and I believe if we do that, our Rotary clubs will be growing. Uh, I, I mentioned that I was surprised about the strength of friendship as a reason why people join and stay in Rotary. But as I started thinking about it, I realized, well, well really, that's the reason that Rotary was started. You know, Paul Harris, our founder in 1905, uh, he had grown up in a small town and and he got a law degree and he moved to Chicago to practice law. Well, I mean, I live in a small town. A lot of you live in small towns. And we know what it's like to feel connected in the community. That's really important to me, to this connection that I have with my community. Well, once he moved to Chicago, he was just this anonymous face. So he had made a few friends and he said, well, let's do this. Let's form this club and we'll recreate that feeling of friendship and connection and network with each other. He probably didn't use the word network, but I think that's what he meant. Uh, and so these four gentlemen joined together and uh, the gen they said, Paul said, well, uh, the first week we'll meet uh, in your office and then the second week we'll meet in, in your office. 
And the third week we'll meet uh, in, in the other fellow's office. And then the fourth week we'll meet in my office. And then we'll just keep rotating the meetings around through our offices. And that's a lot of you may not know. That's why we're called Rotary today is because these, these first four members rotated the meetings through their offices. So, you know, I was mulling this all over and realizing that, you know, really, we are an organization that's built on service. I mean, the, or I'm sorry, on friendship. The service aspect really didn't come in for quite a few years later. Rotary was founded in 1905. The, the first service project wasn't done in Chicago until 1910, and the, the foundation wasn't formed until 1917. So friendship was the very foundation of our organization. So as I was mulling all this over and thinking about this, I got asked to stand up in front of my own club at one meeting and make, make a, an announcement. And I looked out and I realized, wow, here's, here's 80 of my friends. Here's 80 people that I count as my friends in my life. And some of them really close friends, lifelong friends that I've made through Rotary. And as I was thinking that and looking out there thinking, well, this really is about friendship. I realized that there sat my insurance agent, my banker, my real estate broker, uh, the attorney I had to call when one of my dumb kids got a, a minor in possession, the guy that fixes my car. And I realized that not only are these my friends, but they're my network. They're, they're the people that I call on when I need someone to help me in my life. They're people that I can trust. You know, in Rotary, people that join a club of, you know, join a club of 30 people and say, uh, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a personal life coach or I'm a, I'm a stockbroker or something and say, well, gee, you know, in, in, in a month, I'll have 30 new clients. Those people don't usually do very well in Rotary uh, because that's not really what Rot Rotary is not about bringing business to you, but it is very much about developing that network of people that you trust to do business with. So I realized that, you know, friendship and that, and that network of people that we have in our lives, I don't know about you, but I get calls in my office. I don't know how they get my number, but it's like, John, this is Joe Schmeigel from Do We Cheat Him and How in New York. And I got a stock that you just got to, you know, and, and I, I, I try to get, a, and by the time I can get a word in edgewise, I always say the same thing. I say, why would I trust a stranger that I don't know with my money when I can trust somebody that I eat lunch with every week? and sits across the table and has to look me in the eye. That's who I want to trust with my money. So that's what we get through these friendships and these relationships that we build through Rotary. And the other thing we get that I mentioned earlier is we get that leverage. And, you know, the best way I can explain leverage is, is I would love, I, I, I would absolutely love to build a park in my community where disabled kids could play right alongside non dis I'd love to build a million-dollar park where disabled kids could play right alongside non-disabled kids. I'd love to do that, but I don't have a million dollars. But I did that. I did it because my club went together with three other clubs and we built that million dollar park in our community. And I took part in that. I did that. You know, another thing I'd, I'd love to do is I'd love to have $216,000 that I could during my year as district governor, that I could spread out to all the clubs so that they could do those local service projects and their international. I'd love to do that. But, you know, I checked my bank accounts this morning. I don't have an extra $216,000 laying around. But I am doing that because three years ago, all the Rotarians in our district gave $432,000 to the Rotary Foundation. And so this year, three years later, Half that comes back to our district, 216000 and we pass that out to the clubs in the form of district grants. And I know that your clubs had at least, I think, two district grants, at least, that I know of. So I am going to get to do that during my year as district governor, pass out that 216000 And And the last thing I'd like to do, and you're, you know, call me crazy, call me crazy, but I would love to eradicate a major disease off the face of the earth. I'd love to do that but I don't have $1.4 billion, but I am doing it. We're all doing that. That's how much we've given. That's how much Rotarians have given to Polio Plus, $1.4 billion. And I'm going to share some figures with you in just a second here about polio. We truly are just this close. And I'm holding my 
two fingers very close to each other. We really are just this close with polio. So like when I say with the leverage that we get, ordinary people, ordinary people doing extraordinary things like wiping diseases off the face of the earth, like building million dollar parks. I can't do that, but through the leverage I have as a Rotarian, I can do that. Service, friendship, and leverage. It's what we, it's what we get as, as Rotarians. So I mentioned I was gonna talk about, oh, first I wanted to talk about this. Along with this shiny new image, Siegel and Gale, they, they call that our new visual identity, that new brand, our new visual identity. They said, you need to have a new voice as well. You have to have a common voice. We have a common look now. We're not gonna use those 37 or 38 different logos. We're gonna have a common look all over the world, every club, every part of Rotary. We're also going to have a common voice. So they gave us a new voice. And that voice is now when someone asked you and driving along in the car, what is Rotary? You can say, well, we're a leadership organization that's made up of local business, professional, and civic leaders. We meet regularly. We get to know each other. We form friendships. And through that, we're able to get things done in our community and around the world. And that, to me, so perfectly sums up what Rotary does. It, it's, it's who we are. We're a leadership organization that, except in the case of e-clubs, is made up of local, local leaders. That's who we are. What we do, we meet regularly and we form friendships. The very foundation of Rotary is those friendships. And why do we do that? so that we have that leverage that we're able to get things done in our community. And in fact, not just our own community, but around the world. Again, so perfectly describes who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Uh, so they've also given us a way to encapsulate that uh, in our, on our websites. On, on, we put it, uh, the district put it on the side of our trailer. That's very simple about who we are, what we do, and why we do it, and that is, with, with the logo to say Rotary, join leaders, exchange ideas, take action. Join with other leaders, exchange ideas, and then take action to make a difference in your community. So that's our new voice as well. We can use that uh, in our websites and our, you know, any, any place where we want to have a better public image, we can use that. So I said I'd talk a little bit about polio. Uh, I'm going to put up a little chart here. Uh, this year, and it's year to date, it's calendar year, not rotary year. So this is since January 1st. There have been 51 cases of polio on Earth. Now, to put that in perspective, the year we started this, 1985, that we, that we took the pledge that we were going to eradicate polio, there were 350,000 cases every year that killed or crippled children. 350,000 cases year after year after year after year. This year, 51 cases, down from 242 last year. So you can see really how close we are. On August 11th, we celebrated a really important date. Uh, it had been one year since there had been a case of polio in Nigeria. Why is that so significant? I mean, it would be significant if it was, if it was just that. But with no cases for a year in Nigeria, hence no cases on the entire continent of Africa for one year. Nigeria has been declared non-endemic, which means that now the entire continent, this was unimaginable, folks, unimaginable. The entire continent of Africa is non-endemic for polio. Uh, last year, we declared po uh, India polio-free, and in two years, uh, once a country is non-endemic, it takes two additional years for it to be declared polio free, but we're very confident that's gonna happen because they do environmental testing. They try to grow the polio virus and the, it, is, it is absent from Nigeria. Uh, so, so we are very confident. And then Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, very interestingly, uh, you, you may have read in the news that last year uh, our, our vaccine workers were actually being murdered in Pakistan when they went in to do their vaccines. Uh, and and the, the other world, not the U.S. government, but other governments in the world have shamed Pac the Pakistani government into supporting 
uh, Rotary's work and, and the World Health Organization and UNICEF uh, with the vaccines uh, by saying, look, you know, we've eradicated it in, in our country. If you don't get with the program, it's going to come back to our country, and that's not acceptable. So, so now the Pakistani government is negotiating with those tribal leaders in those northern provinces, uh, and not only are they doing the negotiations for us for safe passage, but they're actually protecting our workers when they go in. Uh, last month, in the month of September, this is amazing. Uh, in the just in the month of September, 35 million children in Pakistan were vaccinated. 35 million children, 3 million of which had never been vaccinated before. That's huge. So we really believe that in, in late 2017, early 2018, we'll see the last case of polio ever. And the significance of that is that uh, uh, Ravi Ravindran, our, our, our president, said, you know, that uh, uh, when, when we er eradicate, not if, but when we eradicate polio off the face of the earth, We'll be giving a gift to every child born for as long as man inhabits the earth. And, and if we think about that, that, that is so profound of what Rotary is, is doing. Um, the district conference is coming up in May 6th through 8th. I'd like to invite you all. I know a lot of you live very, very far away. If you could come, that would be great. It'd be a chance to see your other members of your club. Uh, and for everybody, it's a great chance to rub elbows, make new friends, and uh, ha have some fun and learn more about Rotary. So I hope you'll all join us. Uh, uh, we're calling it the uh, District Conference because we're, we are at a high altitude here. We're calling it District Conference with an altitude. And we have a lot of district events. And I just invite you to take part in, in any of these events. Uh, you know, I, I go to all of these and every time I go, I see people leaving from clubs just so uh, enthusiastic and so pumped up and so ready to go back to their clubs with new ideas. And, uh, and, and it's great to be a part of that. And I really invite all of you uh, to do that. Um, I want to just say a, a moment about our giving to the Rotary Foundation. You know, I mentioned about how three years later, uh, half that money that, that we give comes back to our own district. The other half goes to, the, to the, uh, the World Fund. So it's funding those huge global projects that Rotary Clubs do. The other half comes back to our district and we use it for matching funds. Uh, this year, we weren't able to fulfill all the requests from clubs. A lot of clubs came to us, to the district and said, we have a great project we wanna do. We'd like to get matching funds. And we said, we're sorry, we're out of money. We, all the money's been spent. Uh, I, I think that's a crime. So, you know, I've set a goal of 700,000 for this year. Last year we gave 500,000. I really believe that we can give $700,000. So I'm asking everybody just step it up a little bit so that three years from now, that'll be $350,000, not 216,000 coming back to our district. It'll be 350,000 coming back for our clubs to do their projects. And I think that's worthwhile. You know, I've talked a lot about about what is Rotary, and I hope I hope I've given you some some seed for thoughts here. But I also think it's important that we we define really who is Rotary. Uh, it's believed that every morning, 10 million people wake up not knowing that they would have been killed or crippled by polio. 10 million people. You know, I think sometimes we have our eyes so much on the prize, uh, the end game, the eradication, that we don't look back and realize that we've already changed the lives of 10 million people that aren't crippled or are still alive because of Rotary's efforts. Uh, every four minutes, a child dies from a preventable disease. And every, every day, 16,000 people die. 16,000 people die because of a lack of access to clean water every day, day after day. So, you know, when I say who is Rotary, what comes to my mind is who answers that call? You know, when there's a, a typhoon in the Philippines or, or an earthquake in Nepal or a fire in, in Weed, California, like there was about a year ago, or, or a child in a local community that's underserved, you know, who answers that call? Is it Rotary International? No, no. Is it the district? No, we're, we're manager. We're middle management. It's Rotarians. It's Rotary Clubs. It's you and me. It's, it's, it's everyday Rotarians. Every Rotary Club is a local club, and we're the ones that answer that call. A lot of people like to think of Rotary as this huge organization, but it isn't. 
Every Rotary Club is a local club. And that's, it's you and me. And we're the ones that answer that call. We, we are Rotary. Now, our leader and our founder, this was in 1921. He said that if we're to realize our proper destiny, we have to be evolutionary at all times and even revolutionary on occasion. Now, this was 1921. I don't think Paul Harris had the idea that Rotary was going to remain the same. And I mentioned earlier that I, th I think that we're in an identity crisis rather than a membership crisis. I think the, the loss of members is a result of this identity crisis that we've been in. And you know, I think Rotary is a very traditional organization and the world is changing dramatically around us. And I don't think Rotary's really wanted to change. I think Rotary's, we, we wanna be like we've always been. You know, that, that just seemed to work so well, but the world has changed and it's not working. The, the way that Rotary is now, or it has been, it just doesn't work anymore in this modern world with, with new generations aging into Rotary that have a completely different set of values. So when I say that I think that, that it's been an identity problem, you know, the mission of Rotary can never change. I mean, our mission is simply to do good in the world, to build bridges that we'll never cross, to dig water wells that we'll never drink from ourselves, to change the lives of people that we'll never meet. That's our, that's our mission. And that, that has to remain, that's sacrosanct. But how that manifests itself in clubs, I think that's open for discussion because I think that does have to change. I think the e-club is a perfect example of how we can do Rotary in a completely new and different way. And I think that clubs need to be looking at that because as I travel around, I see the clubs that are losing members the fastest are the clubs that are clinging the hardest to the old ways of Rotary. And I believe that that we have evolved, uh, that, that we are getting there. It's, it's been very difficult for us. And the most difficult thing, I think, is the fact that we're starting to get comfortable now. We've evolved to the point where rather than being a really exclusive organization, we've become an inclusive organization. And I think that's that's a change that we have to make. And I think that if we do, and I think we are making it, we've shown last year for the first time in 13 years, we had positive growth in membership in our district. It was only 18 members, only 18, but it was much better than the 100 we lost the year before. So I think we are evolving. And I think that as we evolve, that, that we will be able to fulfill that destiny that Paul Harris had in mind. And I think we will be able to do what our presidents asked us this year, and that is to be a gift to the world. And I think, I actually think Rotary has a very, very bright future so long as we can evolve and change with the times. So thanks everybody for uh, tuning in tonight. This was really fun. Uh, you know, I've given the speech a lot of times. I really enjoyed uh, giving it to all you, although I normally get to see people's faces and, and kind of get their reactions, but this has been really fun. I'm going to check here to see if there's any questions. Anybody here can't see attendee list? Oh yeah, e Emily said she couldn't see the attendee list. Uh, Emily, we've got about 13 attendees, and I can, I'll send you an attendance list if you're interested. Um, well, that's about the only question I see so far. I know we're all busy, so I'll let you all go. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, tuning in tonight. Uh, I really enjoyed my meeting with your club leaders we had a few weeks ago. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes another question. Um, I think that identity crisis can be addressed by a new approach via social networking and online partition, participation, not only locally. You know, Natalie, uh, that was from Natalie. And Natalie, I think, I think that's true. And research is showing that, that younger people who, you know, they're younger people now, but they're, they're going to be aging into Rotary very quickly, that they, they, are, they have fewer and fewer uh, relationships like person-to-person -person relationships and in fact as the social networking is expanding that younger people are actually having their network online more than person-to-person -person. I know that sounds very odd to people my age but it's it's the cold hard reality of the way the world's changing so I think that that things like the e-club that there are a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, I just saw Jackie's question. I won't repeat it. Uh, that, uh, uh, yeah, that there are new ways to do it. 
Okay, so thank you very, very much, and I will sign out now. It's been great, and uh, have a great rest of your evening. Thanks.